here's what's going on now. Um, all of the patents for growth hormone were made in 1987, including the nortotropin mix. I have right here the pamphlets from all of the different growth hormones, okay? I'm gonna read very, very, I'm gonna start with the serostem because that's the one that's only for HIV, but that's the one that claims it doesn't have to be refrigerated prior to reconstitution, okay? So I wanna explain and I wanna explain why the drug companies say that the product must be refrigerated. And I'm not gonna get into conspiracy theories or not, I'm just gonna explain the science. You, you guys can make up your own decisions, okay? Okay, and then afterwards, I'll, I'll just pipe in with a little bit of my experience on the refrigeration also, yeah. Exactly, exactly, okay. So um, the description is on the pamphlet on number 11, and you can go ahead and get this off the, off the website if you want, it's available information, okay? So basically what it says is serostem is human growth hormone produced by recombinant DNA technology. Serostem has, period, sorry. Serostem has 191 amino acid, uh, resides in a molecular weight of 22,125 Daltons. I'm going to repeat that one time so we can all remember that. 22,125 Daltons. Its amino acid sequence and structure are identical to the dominant form, dominant form of human pituitary growth hormone. Now here's, here's where there's a separation and it says serostem is produced by a mammalian cell line and then it has in parentheses mouse C127, which is the, which is the actual, you know, number of the mouse that they use, that particular one. Um, this has been modified by the addition of an HGH gene. So they took the mammalian lining and they added an HGH gene to modify it, okay? And then the serostem is secreted. So then the, the RDNA, first part of it, is secreted through the lining. This is a filtration process, okay? and uh, directly through the cell membrane into the cell culture medium for collection and purification. That's serostem. Serostem is not required to be refrigerated prior to reconstitution. It was patented in 1987. All of the, all of the patents, every single patent for growth hormone goes back to 1987. And it is only approved for people who have HIV positive. Okay, so I'm gonna put this one aside. And let's talk really quick about your experience with not refrigerated growth hormone coming from China and the results that it gave you. So initially, I thought that growth hormone always had to be refrigerated. Um, since then, I've used or experienced so many, uh, <laughs> many, many different types of growth hormone, many different types of sources, you are many different you blood are work on it. Yeah. And uh, I found that it, it being refrigerated is less important than I thought and not even required. But, but, but then I will get some growth hormone sometimes that I believe the manufacturer made it properly, but it's still uh, not very potent. And, and so I, I think it not, it's not that it, my, my uh, speculation is that it's not that it wasn't refrigerated is the problem. It's just that it was exposed to maybe extreme temperatures. Exactly. And yeah. So, so I, I'm right now, if I have growth hormone, like it's cold in Sacramento, I have no problem leaving it in my car. It's cold. It's not, but if it's summertime and it's hot outside and you know how hot it gets in a car, I wouldn't leave it in there. And, and I have even seen, like the, the Pfizer pens, for example. I've seen a friend leave a Pfizer pen in a car and you know it gets like 100 degrees and yeah, that's not gonna work. That, yeah, that's gonna degrade. Speaking of Pfizer, I'm gonna read to you now Pfizer because I have that too, okay? So Pfizer, and it's also under number 11 um, where it says description, okay? So let me read the description of Pfizer. Genotropin, okay? Now, I need you guys to understand that there is differences in wording that are very slight, but these differences actually make the entire story of how it should really be stored and handled. And I'll get into the intention of the drug companies at the conclusion of this. So for the description of genotropin, it is genotropin is the lipolized powder contains somatotropin RDNA, which is 
polypeptide hormone of the recombinant DNA origin. This is already different from serostem, okay? But the patent is still 1987. And all the patents go back to Lily's humotrope, by the way, okay? There was Genentech's protropin, which was 192 amino acid. It was not identical. Then uh, Lily came out, humotrope came out with 191, which was identical. All of these patents go back to Lily's in 1987, and the only difference is the slight wording. Already we hear lyophilized powder containing somatotropin RDNA. That's different than the first one. Let me continue with the polypeptide hormone of the recombinant DNA origin form. This is also different, showing you there's a, a pure process. It is 191 amino acid, resides in a molecular weight of 22,124 daltons. So let's just summarize this really quick. It is one dalton less than serostem. One dalton less. Now I'm gonna get into what that means because a lot of people don't understand what molecular weight and dalton means. I do, and Tony does, and we'll explain that. So with the dalton being one less, it says the amino acid sequence of the product is identical, not the predominant form, which serostem was. This is identical. And by the way, uh, genotropin is the same as humotropin, okay? Um, identical to that of the human growth hormone of pituitary origin, somatotropin. Now, second part of this, where they talk about the mouse uh, mammalian lining, Here's the genotropin. Genotropin is synthesized in a strain of Escherichia coli. This is a certain type of bacteria which has been used specifically to filter the GH, okay? Um, that has been modified by the addition of the gene for human growth hormone. So where the mammalian cell lining was modified by the gene for human growth hormone, in this one, the Estrichia coli is modified with the gene for human growth hormone with one less Dalton. This particular product is approved for children and it is supposed to be refrigerated from the time that it is made to the time that it is done being used. That means during storage and handling and after reconstitution. Now, briefly, Tony, I just want to conclude this because I have the final one, which is the Nordotropin AQ. This is the newest form of growth hormone, the most stable. And by the way, in all the tests, this comes back closest, most identical form to what we have in the pituitary, okay? And I'm gonna explain the different look of each one of these two, because it's important that you understand that the muscle actually forms, and it looks different from the different types of growth hormone. It actually does, you hold less water off the nortotropin than you do off the somatotropin, off the serostem, okay? Let me, let me read the description of the, the nortotropin. It says, and this is also under number 11, nortotropin is a polypeptide hormone of recombinant DNA origin. That's the same as the genentech. So, so far, I'm sorry, uh, of the genotropin. So far, they're the same. The hormone is synthesized by a special strain of E. coli bacteria. This is, this is also, so far, the same. That has been modified by the addition, here's where it changes. Remember where they say modified by the addition of the human gene was added to the mammalian cell lining for the serostem, and then it was added to the Estrichia coli for the, ge the genotropin, and now for the nortotropin, it's modified by the addition of a plasmid, which carries the gene for human growth hormone. Okay, now I'm gonna to read to you this next paragraph because it's extremely important for us to understand why when I break down the science of this and why your coaches don't know shit because they can't explain this. Coach Trevor knows this, and that's why I actually have sat down. He's an extremely educated person, guys. He's not just some big guy. He's actually got degrees. He's got degrees and I don't, put it to you that way. I, I trust his, his opinion. He knows what he's talking about. Now, it says, Nordotropin contains the identical sequence of 191 amino acids constituting the natural occurring pituitary hu human growth hormone, here's the catcher, with a molecular weight of about, it says about, okay, which means it's 
really close to that. The other two were dead on. They didn't say about. Listen to this, 22,000 Daltons. That's 124 Daltons less than genotropin. What does this mean? Okay, what this particular product claims is that once it's been used, once you use it for the first time, you have 28 days at room temperature. It's perfectly fine at room temperature for 28 days. Let's think about this for a second, guys. Drug companies get sued all the time. By the smallest little thing, they can get sued. What you see here is clear evidence, okay, of the drug companies working together to keep the storage and handling preserved as refrigeration. And the lighter the Dalton weight, the pure the actual growth hormone is, okay? The purer it is, the less fragile it is, the more it can withstand room temperatures. Now let's look further into this. Tony, I think you remember it was about 2000 and between 2005 and 2007 that Congress made um, growth hormone illegal, Chinese import growth hormone illegal. Is that correct? Uh, yeah, it's, a, it's not a DEA scheduled substance, but it's still in the criminal code that it's illegal to distribute it. Yeah. Which I, I don't know the exact date, but yeah, it was around the time when people started discovering uh, how effective it was for anti-aging and curing a bunch of other diseases. So huh. certainly not for the public protection. It was certainly to keep our access away from non-USA uh, pharmaceutical sources yeah. to protect their profits at our expense. And Gen Science was a company that was using the exact same technology as the genotropin. They were using the same technology as the denotropin, and it did not have to be refrigerated. They had U.S. representatives here in the country. And I need to, to make a, retra uh, a retraction because I told you this, Tony, too, that, oh, it has to be refrigerated. It's, you know, it's in an active state. It's like raw meat. It'll go bad. You know, I was saying all this because of the way that it was, they were explaining it to me. They got me, too. I'll be honest with you. I believe the bullshit. Until I actually read the Dalton weight and I realized that the lighter the Dalton weight, the purer it gets, the purer it gets, the more it can stay at room temperature. The fact is, is that it's always been stable at room temperature. The, they price gouged everybody by artificially raising it, saying that the storage and handling is almost, and I would say over 50% of the cost is the fact that it has to be stored and handled a certain way. And mind you, it doesn't even change with the nortotropin until after you use it. So it has to be in your possession and then used, and then it's safe at room temperature. This is all to protect the drug companies from getting sued, because in the event that there was a shipment that was sent that, did get, that got lower than room temperature, like you said, got warm, it would then change the potency of it, which then could leave them open for a lawsuit. And so they protect the, they, they preserve the strength of the, of, of the product by guaranteeing it because it's been cold the whole time. But it doesn't have to be. And that's a fact. We all know that now. Yeah. Yep. That's, that's, uh, I believe it generally when I look into drugs and, and what it is legal in the United States and what pharmaceutical companies push, it's not the best drug. It's not the best form of the drug. It's what they can patent or what they can use to exclude other competition so they can keep the profits to themselves. I mean, it's absolutely ridiculous. It's ridiculous. The cost of pharmaceutical growth hormone in the United States is a hundred times what it should be. It's crazy. I mean, it, it could be growth hormone if it wasn't made illegal in order to protect the pharmaceutical companies, mm -hmm. could be as cheap as any over-the-counter supplement well, and just as available. And let's talk about that because that's the next thing I want to discuss with you about. You know, um, I'm, my parents are from Iran, and I have clients that go to Iran, and they tell me about the drugs that are over there. And everybody raves about, you know, oh, the, the, first off, the growth hormone American dollars, I think it's like a dollar fifty in IU. It's that cheap. So they, they, can't, they can't rape the people over there because they have no money, okay? So even in order to sell it, they have to stop all that nonsense, and they have to do well, it. 
there's there's healthy competition over there too. They have access to all of the brands. The Chinese, unlike the United States, yeah, to, yeah, yeah. So that's right. So even American brands have to compete against yeah. Chinese brands. Whereas here, we have this monopoly on the market by the American pharmaceutical companies to give us usually worse quality products. I'm I'm not saying Nordotropin and Pfizer are great. I'm not saying they're worse, but oftentimes worse quality drugs for a higher price just to be able to exclude better quality drugs at a lower price so that they can keep the profit to the corrupt pharmaceutical companies here. One of the one of the drugs that I noticed them doing with was the, the active ingredient of Viagra. Um, mm-hmm. You're for a while enhanced athlete was making the generic version available. Is it still available? I don't know if it's still available. No, the U.S. is also... So the, here's the funny thing. Viagra is off patent. Yeah. So, you know, you can buy a generic. Right. But Viagra is still reinvesting massive amounts of money to try and convince people that their brand name Viagra is better than the rest. And then also to try to kill the competition. Right. I mean, that, and that's what you're paying for. So when someone goes and pays $300 for Viagra that they should be paying $20 for... You know what the drug companies are using the rest of that money for? To d- actively give you misinformation and drive you away. Propaganda. And, and yeah, and also to lobby the government to go after any competition against them, even though it's generic and off patent. So it's now, still tr- basically, it's still to try to keep a monopoly on it the same way as when they had the patent. Exactly. And now I want to talk to you because I know that you've tried the, and I don't think, you know, maybe you're, maybe you feel different than me. We didn't discuss this. I, it, for, for everybody to know, I sent you a message. I asked you to do a video with me. Um, and I hope we can do more, Tony. I hope we can, because there's a lot of great things sure. that we can talk about. 